Hey guys, today we got a new guy on the job. We're pouring a 40 by 28 garage and patio. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so on this one, we were hired as a sub to come in and just pour and finish the concrete. We didn't do any of the prep and no, none of the wire or anything like that. So just today we show up, we pour the concrete, we finish it, and then we're done for today. And that's how a lot of our jobs are. The guys that actually did the concrete foundation are the ones that subbed the floor to us. The builder, the GC, is the one that did the floor prep as far as the styrofoam and the wire. The chairs under the wire and then the builder also hires out the excavation so there's a whole separate sub that does all the gravel work and the earthwork and the grading and all that now the new guy on the job the guy in the white hat he's not really a new guy uh, his name's Sean Sean's been working for himself for years he's actually kind of retired now and he's also a retired firefighter he had 30 years as a firefighter so he's He's been in the concrete business and the firefighter business for a long, long time. And now he's, like I said, he's pretty much retired and he just says, you know, anytime we need a hand just to give him a call and he'll come help pour. So that's what we did today. So Sean, everybody say hi to Sean down in the comments. Uh, you might see some more of him this summer off and on here and there when we need an extra hand. Um, good thing about Sean is he knows what he's doing. He can pour the concrete, he can screed it, he can power trial it if we needed him to. He, he knows how to do everything. He mainly did concrete walls. Uh, and he would do his own floors and then sometimes he, he'd hire us to come help him when he had bigger stuff. But now we just call him when we need help. So the layout of the garage is 40 by 28. It has three garage doors. As you can see in the front, it's got a pass door over here by where Darren's magging the edges. And then in the back, there's some type of like a sunroom or a patio or something going on back there. And that's just flat back there. The front, I mean the garage pot is all sloped out the doors. You don't, there's not many times, probably less than 25% of the garages we do have floor drains and most everybody that does them inside a foundation like this will just slope them and and that's including mine I got a garage a little bit bigger than this and it's sloped out the front and I never have any trouble with water sitting on the floor it all just kind of runs out the doors if this really there's really only rain water in there that drips off the car so not much water at all and there's never a problem in the winter with the, the doors freezing shut with the water so you know, we live in Maine, we get a lot of freeze-thaw cycles, and that's just never been an issue for me, at least. Now, what Darren and I are doing, we're striking off our, what we call our pads, our grade pads. So we take a laser, we shoot the height of the floor in the middle, and make a little wet pad with it, put an X in it, and that's the height we need to be at. And then we'll use the grades around the edges where we've snapped chalk lines for grade to strike off from... And then we're going to use what we call this this big center pad to screed to screed the floor off from. And we're going to do this back, what we call this back where me and Darren were, we call that a bay. And we're going to just empty this truck out first. He's almost empty so we can get rid of him. So where Darren and Luke are right now, they're getting ready to grab the screed. And they're going to screed down that back bay. So that's a little bit over halfway of the garage probably about 24 feet long by that's a 14 foot screed so that's a pretty good sized bay right there not quite 400 square feet they're screeding but almost and once we get the concrete dumped out I mean to screed a bay like this probably I don't know I didn't time it but probably a minute between a minute and two minutes just to get it screeded so it doesn't take very long to get a garage screeded down it probably takes longer to just to get the concrete out of the truck and get it raked around than it does anything else but two guys that can kick screed like that don't have to stop and start all the time and then you know you get one or two guys behind them raking the concrete that knows what they're doing and that goes actually goes down pretty easy 
and it goes down the way we do it it goes down nice and what we call flat too there's no humps or dips in that section you'd be able to tell when you bull floated if, if it did you'll see me here in a minute bull float the bull float's going to ride over that nice and smooth and just smooth it right out now i jumped on the screed right there with darren and we're going to get this part screeded out so that slopes from where I am to where Darren is by the door. That half slopes an inch towards Darren, and then the back half also slopes an inch from the back to the middle. So for a total of two inches and 28 feet. And I mean, that's not a ton of slope, and you won't notice it by walking on it or driving on it, but it's enough just to get any water to start running towards the doors, you know. A little bit of water on the floor is not going to run out the door, but if you did happen to get a lot of water on the floor, it would at least run towards the door, not towards the back corner. As you can see under that bow float, just it smooths it out really nice. Nothing to fill in, nothing, no humps to take out. Now it's real early in the morning, the sun's not even quite up yet, but it's starting to come up in the background. We had to stop pouring at 6 this morning because they had 11 loads of concrete going out at 7 o'clock. So we needed these two trucks back by 7. And that's just about what it took us to get this all dumped out. It took us just about an hour to get this thing all poured out, screeded, so and So once we get loaded. this garage pot dumped out, we'll back him right back so here. So first truck's down, patio. now we're on to the second get truck. Get that truck out of the way. But I had people cutting on my way there. We also, we're using, we use 3500 PSI mix with water reducer in it so we can pour the slump fairly loose. And then all our mixes have fiber mesh in it for reinforcement. And then this one, the builder for some reason wanted the wire with the chairs under it. And I think he tied a piece of rebar over the tops of those chairs you can see looks like a little thicker piece on top the chairs for the most part they do a pretty good job holding the wire up i mean it's the wire is just so flimsy it's hard to get it up the floor is five inches thick too so five inches thick with two inches of styrofoam and then probably a couple feet of gravel under it compacted and this this floor will never go anywhere So I'm magging the edges to a chalk line and that's you know we come in usually beforehand whether it's a day before or whenever the floor gets ready and shoot our grades so we know exactly how much concrete to order and then we'll use that chalk line to, sh to mag float our grades to and then in the middle like I said right there we'll just shoot that with a laser And that tones out perfect. Once that's perfectly set to where we need it, it beeps. It has a solid beep, so there's no close enough. It's it's within probably a sixteenth of an inch tolerance. So it's it's pretty it's pretty level right there, and pretty uh, accurate. Concrete still has some warm water in it. It's still pretty chilly where we're pouring even though it's early in the season. So it's got a little bit of warm water in it and we still put a little accelerator in it too. Just to give it a, a little bit of a kick to get going. And we could feel that first load starting to set up a little bit as we're screeding off in it. See how that long screed, that's a 2x4 magnesium screed. How it really levels out the surface as we pull it towards ourselves. And you can it leaves you know a lot of aggregate at the surface. That's pretty normal. And then the bull float will push that aggregate down just below the surface and smooth it right out. Me, Darren, and Luke, we always take turns screeding, so. You know, one guy doesn't have to screed the whole floor by himself, especially early in the season like this. A 
lot of our videos, we use a vibra screed, a vibrating concrete screed, but usually in the garages where we have slope or pitch, we tend to screed them more by hand and pour the concrete just a little bit stiffer. So we just like the accuracy right, so of left. screeding by hand because that's just the way we've always done it. This little flat thing up here, we could have used the vibra screed on this, but it was so small, there's no sense of getting it out for something so small. I don't know what they're going to use this room for. But we're going right off the top of the wall here, so I would imagine there's some type of flooring going on in here to cover up the seam between the floor and the wall. Darren's just going to mag the edges even with the top of the wall, and then we'll screed right off the top of the wall. See how them chairs, they hold the wire up pretty good for the most part, but I mean, you still have to step on it to walk back in there. But at least a good part of that wire will be up off the bottom. Good. Darren jumped in on the inside, he's kick screeding, and then Luke's just screeding on the outside, right off the top of the wall. He's, you know, he's just following Darren's lead, kind of pushing down, so he's striking it right off the wall, and then putting enough pressure on the screed to pull it backwards at the same time. Yeah, you can see how smooth and flat that bow float gets it now. We've had that bow float probably for 15 years, I bet. That's a really old bow float, but it still works really good. We like the ones with the rounded edges, too. You can see how they barely leave any lines on the edges as it bow floats. And if you're going to end up power troweling the floor like this, that's really important. You don't want to be trying to grind out any bow float lines. So the flatter and smoother you get it, the better. Probably go on the driveway. Well, hey guys, that went pretty good. So the garage, that's a that's a 40 by 28 garage, three bays, and this is a 14 by 12 patio. Or floor was about a five inch floor. It took 21 yards, and it went pretty good. We like I said, we sloped it out the front two inches from the back to the front. We'll, we'll taper those doorways down a little bit more, so when the garage door sits down, they sit on a taper, so no water comes in. And that's it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.